man, you have been told you can't pull money out of your 401k because you're gonna have to pay taxes, you're gonna have to pay penalty, and you start running the math and you're like, shoot, that's a lot of money. I guess I should just leave it in my 401k where it's not producing the returns that I want for retirement. But in this video today, I'm gonna share with you the five steps of how you actually pull money out of your 401k without paying taxes and without paying penalties so that you can invest it in real estate and all sorts of other stuff. Here we go. One, one shot, not a future before it's gone. All right, today we're talking about how you access money from your 401k. And here's the first thing that we need to cover. If you're trying to pull money out of a 401k for a company that you're still earning at and contributing to, you're gonna have a hard time pulling it out. Oh my God, is this bad? You could go talk to your HR director and say, can I do an in-service distribution? And there might be a loophole in your 401k where you can pull it out. But generally, you might have to do some type of hardship loan or maybe you can borrow up to $50,000 out of it. Man, I call it 401k jail for a reason because your money is sitting in it and it's very difficult to pull out if it's from a current 401k. This friggin' sucks. Hey, you don't come in here <laughs> with your However, you may have an old 401k or maybe you have a partner or a spouse that has a 401k and it's a rollover. That meant that, well, back when I worked at that other company, I contributed to the 401k and when I came to the new company, I just rolled it in. That 401k plays by a total different set of rules. First and foremost, let's just say that I had a hundred grand in my rollover 401k and you're like, you know what? I'm gonna take that out. And someone says, don't do that. You're gonna pay taxes and penalties. And you're like, well, how bad can it be? Well, let's find out. $100,000, first of all, the penalty is gonna be 10%. So there's a 10th or $10,000 right off the top. Then there's $90,000 left. And let's say that year you made at your job $90,000. Well, the IRS is gonna say, well, you made 90 grand and then you accessed another $90,000. We're gonna say that you made $180,000. That's gonna bump you into a higher tax bracket and then you're gonna have to pay taxes on all of that. And so you're thinking, shoot. So let's just say there's my 10% penalty, that's 10 grand. Let's just say I'm paying another 20% to taxes. So that's like a, another almost $20,000. I've lost a third of the money that I was pulling out. Chris, I don't wanna do that. And that's why in today's video, I'm going to be giving you an alternative. In this alternative, we're gonna do what's called a self-directed 401k. It's where you're basically saying, all right, I'm gonna take my rollover 401k and I basically want to remove it from the market without triggering taxes or penalties. And you can do that by basically saying, I'm actually not taking out of my 401k. I'm keeping it in my 401k. I'm just no longer choosing to have it sit in mutual funds and crap over the last 20 years that average, this is a true stat, 4.2% over the last 20 years. Inflation under Biden has literally been like 4.2%. So it's like, I'm like breaking even, it doesn't even make sense. So if I keep it into the 401k by doing a self-directed 401k, I don't have to pay my 10% penalty and I don't have to pay taxes on it. Ooh, what is a self-directed 401k? All right, there are five steps to doing this and here's the very first one. You need to identify a custodian. You basically need to identify a company that will help you take the money out and put it into what is called a self-directed account. Now, I really like what the name means. It means that you yourself can direct what you do with this money as long as you follow the rules. Now, by the way, if you're not sure who to use as a custodian, I recommend that you work with Directed IRA. And if you want their contact information, you'll find it in the link below this video. Step two is actually setting up your self-directed IRA or 401k, because you can do this both for an IRA or a 401k. You can roll your funds into a self-directed IRA or 401k plan, and then use them to invest in real estate or other alternative investments. Real estate investments in self-directed IRAs grow tax deferred or tax free until withdrawal. So that's kind of the benefit of growing it in the self-directed account is I can direct the money into a qualified investment, get the returns, and then put it back in where it's gonna grow tax-free and then I can reinvest it later, have it grow more, have it come back to your self-directed account. Think of it a little like a bank account that basically works this way and you're just growing your money inside this self-directed account. Once you're all set up, now it's time for you to actually figure out what do I wanna place my money in? Remember, while these plans allow the option to become a do-it-yourself landlord, they also open you up to a wide range of completely passive real estate investment options through partnerships or private equity firms that provide the same advantages of direct ownership but without the headache. 
you also have what's called a private placement memorandum or a PPM. That is a very typical financial tool used for raising money for a company, raising money for other real estate projects. Now with your self-directed account setup, there's things that you may do and things that you cannot do. For example, you're not going to be allowed to invest in a company that you're starting up. Like you can't actually provide a direct benefit to yourself for any of your own investment options. I know that sounds a little bit weird, but these are the rules with these self-directed accounts. You can, however, direct that money into other investments that involve other people who are going to help you invest in real estate, people that can help you buy into other companies or syndicate your money through other private placement memorandums or securities. So there are things that you can do. And when you work with your custodian, they'll help you understand these options. Step four, it's time to actually make your investment. Literally, you identify the investment and now basically you wire the funds. There's a little bit of paperwork. Your custodian will help you with that and voila, you did it. You literally got your money out of a 401k or IRA and you've directed it into something different. You avoided the taxes, the penalties, and now your money is invested in something you believe in that's growing hopefully a lot better than sitting in the typical 4.2% 401k returns. The fifth step is managing your investment. So any income or gains from your investment will go back into your self-directed account. Similarly, any expenses related to your investment must be paid out from your self-directed account. So let's just say I invested some money and then it paid out a big dividend. That dividend doesn't come to me, it comes back into my self-directed account. Now, if I choose to take money out of my self-directed account and pay myself, that is when I would pay taxes or penalties. And what's great about that is it's only on the amount that I'm taking out that I want to pay myself because really I'm using this as a very sophisticated investment tool to make all sorts of different investments. Think about why you originally set up your 401k or IRA in the first place. It was for retirement, right? Like you were setting money aside and you wanted it to grow and become something for retirement. And with the self-directed account, it still can have that exact same purpose. For example, I'll have people that will partner up with me in real estate and what they'll do is they'll use their self-directed accounts with me to acquire real estate and then what I get to do is grow that for their retirement and basically turn a couple of properties into several properties into more properties and then at the end of the day, eventually it gets to come back to you where you get to make the money on it. One of the things that I learned a long time ago is that if you're not going to become an expert at something, in the game of money, then you probably shouldn't do it. There's a lot of people that dabble in the game of real estate, for example, because they've heard the stats. Andrew Carnegie was the first to coin that 90% of all millionaires made it in real estate. But here's what most people don't know. The experts are the one that consistently make the money and not a lot of people are willing to pay the price for expertise. What is that price? Malcolm Gladwell says that you need 10,000 hours in a specific field to be considered a master. And for myself, having completed over $2 billion of real estate transactions, over 6,000 single family homes, that's definitely put me in my Malcolm Gladwell 10,000 hours times several times over. In fact, we've mastered the game so much that we've now learned how to create a really exciting ROI that trumps 401ks 27 to one. If all we do, for example, is earn at least 25% a year on our real estate year over year over year, over 20 years, will actually outperform retirement accounts earning 6%, 27 to one. So if you're looking to self-direct your 401k or IRA and you're looking for a partner that is expert at making higher returns, click the link below and learn about partnering with me. And what I'll do is I'll open you up to a whole new world of real estate that is turnkey, passive, hands off, but allows you to make some amazing returns. The kind that come to retirement, the goal and focus is to put you in a position where you've made millions of dollars. Now, if you want to explore what that looks like, click the link below and let me show you how we do it. Now, in this video, you may have picked up on a little bit of an edge, like some negativity that I hold towards 401ks, and that's because they're a scam. In fact, there are six things that make them a scam. And if you don't know this, you need to click this video and watch it right now.